the mystery of untold lore in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I had no idea this was a thing. Has anybody found the other two symbols in game? And it shows one of the corners of the logo and that metal marking. And then one of the other corners and the, the freaking thing in the grass. And then they ask, has anyone seen the last two? I can't believe this. Before this game came out, the idea behind these four corners was that it was just Karate and Maridon's ride forms. You know, like a freaking ground form, a flying form, water form, and climbing form. I mean, why else would the logos be there? Then there they are in the center. Even got the wheels. But apparently from the start, even in their logos, they were teasing something. Now, this is the lore in game. Apparently, people have been down here in the crater before. These are not human drawings let me go in game and see if i can find these the markings on the covers are all found specifically in area zero i wonder if other symbols might be like etched in the walls or something so here's the first marking right here it's all the way down in the crystal land and this cr so this metal thing when reading the books is described as completely unscratchable by heat's team when he found it so a third legendary is mentioned in this game, which we'll talk about in a sec, but this is not the third legendary is doing. This is human writing. And this is also similar to what it looks like when Heath wrote those notes under some weird influence. This has to be left by ancient Paldian people. They're like instructions for something, or this one in particular isn't an instruction, but it has something important written there. And what are these dots on the map? Is this like important locations in the region it's kind of eerie to imagine if this was like people a hundred thousand years ago so before i find the second location this is the one on the top left of the logo which i can't it actually is it's not even a stretch with the two little circles beside this is why that's in the logo so when i played through this game in violet for the second time i got this idea that you can't just make a time oh, freaking amber alert that's the fr you can't just make a time machine and send master balls to a random time period like one would appear right here kidnap me and take me to the future or past right it makes more sense if you have to communicate with something so sada builds this time machine here and the way she's actually catching pokemon from the past is she's communicating to the exact time machine build that existed a long time ago and so these instructions or whatever's left by the ancient people may be hints at instructions to building another time machine. I saw this comment someone posted about the game making more sense for Toro because he's talking about the future. So all this techie stuff makes sense in that regard as opposed to Sado who's just digging into the past. But it makes sense in the past too if it's a lost technology situation. Regardless of what the message is, whatever that iron steel is, no one in the current region can touch it with our current technology this is on some pyramid hieroglyphics crap let me find the second symbol which this one's a little harder to find why specifically were these the only pokemon that came out it doesn't sound entirely like she could capture anything that was in the past and more like she could capture certain pokemon from the past it's like these are the pokemon that just happen to be near a time machine in the past See, it's right here it's not even in the crystal part it's hidden on the green, more surface part of it. So it's not even like you can think a legendary did this. I mean, the third... Why is that shiny so... Chan Chansey so bright? The symbol's right on the ground here. This is also the only location Roaring Moon and Iron Valiant would be. What the frick? Is that a... What?! What am I even supposed to say? You kidding me? I found a shiny? This ain't Roaring Moon. Someone did tweet me saying I missed a shiny in like episode two. What the frick? A pink sneasel. All right, you can be best so like the butter. All right, so you come here in the post game and you can climb high enough to see it. This is the symbol on the top right side. And at first, it looks like you're tripping and that it's a stretch, but no, that's actually the symbol. The little triangle cutouts. The way it's etched into the ground, it looks weird. It's like what some machinery used to be here or something like burnt into the ground when it landed here reminds you of this weird sand pattern this idea that if you like teleported from another world the impact would create this like pattern i mean we don't have a location for where the time machine could have been right could this have been where the time machine was but well, this looks like someone picked it up <laughs> like a rock <laughs> and you, just the markings are underneath the the time machine couldn't have been here because 
something of that nature needs to be at the deepest parts of the crystal to use it. So that's symbol one and symbol two. The third symbol is this weird hexagon looking thing. It kind of looks like there's a Pokeball in the middle. We don't know what it is. Maybe someone in the comments here might know, but to me, the first thing I think of is that that's a hexagon. Hexagon is the shape brought up by Heath in the Scarlet and Violet book when he describes the disc Pokemon. It kind of looks flat like a disc. Here's the disc Pokemon. It's got the hexagons in it. It bore a shell with layers of overlapping hexagons and gleam brighter than a limestone. There's two directions. This could either be like a real breathing creature or it's just an entity. It's alive, but you know, not really. And then the fourth symbol, no one can really figure that out. But before I look at the comments, I want to bring up the idea that Heat once went into a trance when he was separated from the crew and he woke up and saw he wrote all these equations. Now, who, who freaking told him those equations? He makes it sound like a voice told him, which could be a person. If it's a person, maybe it's a kind of like a vision from a different time period. Or two, if it's a voice, maybe it's like the, the legend, third crystal legendary talking to him. But I don't think it's the third crystal legendary because it feels like the notes he wrote were the blueprints to building the time machine. They say Sada and Toro invented it. I don't think they invented it out of thin air. I think someone led them down that path of thinking. We don't get to see Sada and Toro alive. So we don't know where their head exactly was at or their de demeanor. But I would imagine they uncovered some proper stuff about the Crystal Legendary. And two, that they might have gone crazy like Heath. Heath only went a bit crazy because he was writing the equations that he didn't know about. And you know, he came back to his senses, obviously. But to be constantly living down in Area Zero for like six years, I imagine they got influenced to a, a next level. And I say that because I noticed something. Darn, no one has the picture. You know, I'll show you myself. Arvin brings up every copy he's looked at has that page smudged out, which makes me wonder if Sada's copy that we left down there and we can't get back anymore, had it not smudged, you know, like she was able to read something clear enough. Cause Arvin mentions he only ever looked at the Herb and Mystica page. He wouldn't have known if this copy wasn't smudged. A phantom memory. During our exploration of Area Zero's depths, I eat strayed from the team and was found later unconscious. When awoken, I could only recall speaking with someone in an unfamiliar place as if in a dream. What could the third legendary be? Some kind of dream Pokemon? So when you're dreaming, he can come into your old Sandman dreams. I was found holding the page shown here. The handwriting is my own, but I have no memory writing. So it's Heat's handwriting. Something made him write that. You see that image in the top left? You see how it has something dead in the center? Screenshot this. Let's see if I'm wrong. We're diving back in, baby. So these crystals, they are in the shape of hexagons. There's that dork down there. I wonder if you could even find this page somewhere here. What is that drawing there? All right, she be doing some calculations. I know this is expected because she built a time machine. These don't match up with the, the freaking photo. Wait, is that one of the symbols? It's kind of, not really though. Let me show you this. Here is Sada's time machine. Here's the center of his notes. This right here with the marking in the center right here. That looks like what Sada ended up building. Now, let's just pretend that's true. And that the notes he wrote was to build a time machine. Who's who appeared? Who did that? Who freaking appeared in his dream and told him to do this? If it's the legendary, you got nothing better to do. Like the legendary stuck in another time period and wants, wants you to come free it. Someone banished it to another time period. That's how they sealed it away. And like only its remaining crystals have influence here to talk to people. I don't think that's the case. That's why for me, my favorite idea is that I don't know how they got a vision of someone, but they're being taught to make a time machine to interact with different timelines. So theoretical in a third version, which maybe we'll get, maybe we won't, you would be able to go in this time machine if they just build it a bit differently, access that timeline and then come back. You could. The time machine made in each game is flawed. One only goes to the future, one only goes to the past, but it's capable of both. For humans, I mean. I love that she, so she took the, she took the book to the past. I bet you that book has it unsmudged. Let's see what uh, people in the comments are saying. Let's see if anyone has seen the other two symbols. There's something reminiscent of the third one in the Scarlet and Violet book. Haven't seen the fourth of this. Oh, that's the, the picture I literally just showed. Right here. It's the time machine. Oh, it is. It's the freaking. Is that a crown? Man, Heath been burning the, the most potent blunt in the world. 
The fourth one is bugging the hell out of me because it seems so familiar and I can't for the life of me figure out why. Whiteboard in the Poco Pat lab. Really? How does Brood Bonnet move? Okay, this is the Pocopat lab. So we're in this lab. Oh, oh, but that, what the frick does that symbol mean? Oh, I think that is. Oh, that is the symbol. There's the four symbols. What the heck could that possibly mean? This don't help me at all. <laughs> My friends and I think the marks represent the legends of this generation. The hourglass represents a time traveling Pokemon. The four circles represent the ruinous four. Nah, nah, nah. Well, that's a theory for us to discuss now. I mean, what do you guys think? There's obviously the paradox of Heath writing this book in the first place. I can't really freaking imagine this right now. I feel like the last time I found a shiny was Mimikyu and Sun and Moon. Come join the champion assessment. The Elite Four has a female mistaken as a male. One of the strongest four-year-olds in history. Best characters in these games. Professor Snape. This meme is horrible. <laughs> Nimona, please let me and my family go. What the hell, man? Gita, Nimona is the strongest champion ranked trainer in history. Me facing a literal baby in the Elite Four. Does she say that? Alright, Gita, that's a plot hole. Like, they all got the glove. You can't tell me they're not champion rank. Maybe you gotta see what it says in Japanese. Maybe one of the youngest is more accurate. Well, what do people say? Nope, they seem to be employees of the Paldian Pokemon League, selected and appointed by Gita herself. Don't have to be champion to get hired for a position. I think it's most blatantly obvious with Larry. He straight up complains about it being his job. Oh, it is his job. But they are obviously champion ranked. There's no way they're not. I feel like maybe it would feel cool if there weren't that many champions, maybe. Maybe the Elite Four are under champion level. And we only have Nimona, Gita, and like two other mystery characters in total. That would push the rank of champion actually back up. I mean, technically every region would have champions then. Steven and Wallace, the top champion would just be the current holder. My personal opinion is that Poppy's parents paid her way into the Elite Four. They probably bought all her Pokemon from champion level trainers too. My theory is they belong to one of her parents who was Elite Four and passed away. The Pokemon would listen to Poppy so Gita gave her the parents job so she didn't have to worry about finding someone new with an Elite Four level team. <laughs> really, Gita? <laughs> Gita's like, oh, I'll hire the baby. <laughs> I'm too lazy. So why can't Poppy just be a prodigy? Leave it at that. Different sizes of Gardevoir. No way this is a post. No, look, she freaking stares down at you. Thank, good job, guys, making this. What is the worst Paradox Pokemon in your opinion? Alright, I'm I'm racist to Brute Bonnets. I freaking hate Iron Treads' face. And the rest I'll, I'll allow. You know, Brute Bonnet, you're fine. I take back. I'm... I'm a change man now. I freaking... Dude, look how cool this looks. It's the ruinous Pokemon in old graphics. Oh! Oh, shoot. Snail man? Oh, this feels nice. Leopard boy. Oh, of course, the almighty Zelda pot. And a fish. There's one thing you missed that I think you'd really want to see. You read one bookshelf in Scarlet in the Lighthouse Lab. But there's two with different info about Paradox Pokemon. Really? Alright, well, me and my... April. Oh, it talks about Salamence. I missed this. A primeval Salamence. This elusive creature is called Roaring Moon after a similarly described being in the Scarlet Book. It looks similar to Salamence when they undergo a... It's actually mega, mega evolved. It looks similar to Salamence when they undergo a certain phenomenon elsewhere in the world, but it's unclear if there's a connection. This creature scatters feathers as it flies around at high speed seeking prey. It's thought to be more savage than Salamence. And if you should encounter one, it's imperative that you avoid actual contact. Well, guess what? Its stats are weaker, so F that thing. More cutscenes from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet should absolutely have been voiced. You guys voice acted this? Okay, gang, on the count of three. One, two. <laughs> Hasta la vista, Cassiopeia. And hello, Penny. It hits, man. I'll give it to you. See my brother's Instagram story makes me hungry. Wait, how did that happen? How did that happen? A delayed game is eventually good. A bad game will sell 10 million copies in three days. Pokemon Scarlet's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> Wait, 
he made a noise. <laughs> Yo, I've seen this. I've seen this. Frick, I wish this happened to me in my playthrough, bro. The thing is, it, it can't happen in clips like this because you anticipate something's gonna happen. It needs to happen in your in your gameplay. I'm so mad. <laughs> what the frick? Hey, that man chilling. All right, I'm gonna call it quits here, guys. Go on and shank that like button. Let me know your thoughts on the four symbols and just the lore of this game. There's so much unexplained. As we're coming up to the new year, especially towards Pokemon Day, I'm sure we'll get an announcement of something. Third version or DLC. A lot of people are talking about DLC. I don't know if this is really gonna happen, but man, it'd be so cool to wake up one day and see them talk about more from this game. They're very obviously unanswered questions and Sada and Tor, you never even get to speak to them once. Imagine how much they know. The real ones, I mean. All right. Shank that like button. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.